Alright, so today um, I've been working on my dad's um, Gen 1 Coyote 6R80. Um, this is 76 Bronco, but you know that doesn't really matter today. I'm, I'm basically um, showing what all you need to have hooked up. This is obviously a very temporary setup. This is what you need to have hooked up so that you can test start your Coyote. Um, this is a um, Gen 1 control pack with a um, power by the hour 6R80 harness. So the first thing you need basically is you know a battery that's in good health and um, starting on the ground side um, color doesn't matter here we're just just using random <laughs> random you know spare wires to make this all work just so we could get it set up and we have a wire that goes from here on the on the ground post comes across loops around and goes to the back of the cylinder head. This is the passenger cylinder head. Um, basically that is grounding the engine block and the transmission, you know, in proximity and basically everything that you see here um, because everything's hard mounted together. The, the chassis um, doesn't need a ground in, in our setup because everything's grounded from like the engine. Um, you could also put that behind a bell housing, bell housing bolt or something like that like any of these there or there anywhere you can pick up a good ground but that worked out um, nicely for me also there was a ground strap on it already so i knew ford you know would have considered that an acceptable ground already then since we're on the topic of grounds also i have this uh, number 12 just again random scrap wire that comes up to this wire nut awesome <laughs> um, anyway and so this this whole wire nut is like the ground um, for the control side of this setup so one of the one of the you know ground comes in and then ground goes out comes along this wire goes over to here and there's a, a little um this would have been one of the main harness grounds for the truck um this would have probably been mounted to the um like probably the firewall somewhere in the cowling area and there was a little um eyelet that was all screwed up when it got removed from the truck so i just cut that off and grounded it right there. Uh, the second item that's coming out of here is um, on the power, on the uh, control pack, it says battery ground. Of course, that'll be one that you'll tie in there as well. And then um, ours was one of the early 6R80 um, control packs and it was like missing a pin or they had some sort of repair. So your um, pack may have this, may not have this, may be totally different, I'm not sure, but um, also there was a ground um, from here. And if you don't have this ground, um, basically the fuel pump doesn't work um, and the way that it's supposed to work is when you key on your ignition you know you turn to run basically the pump is supposed to run the whole time in, in our setup that we have here also coming out of this wire nut is a ground wire that's this guy right here and he runs all the way back all the way to the fuel pump and you can see right here um, that's I just looped uh, stuck a little terminal under there um, to to get our ground for our or make a basically a supplemental ground for the fuel pump make sure it had a nice clean ground and that takes care of you know what's going on from the grounding side on the positive side of things uh, positive on the battery uh, you have one uh, larger wire that runs up here and it comes around right here and loops onto the big post of the starter and you can see it you can see it attached right there um, that's the uh, actual 12 volt that uh, drives the starter motor also um, the other large 12 uh, positive 12 volt goes down comes up and mounts on to the main um, lug on this power by the hour um, accessory harness or whatever transmission harness whatever you want to call it um, so that that basically hooks onto there and you can see it goes through that fuse uh, that mega fuse and powers all the relays and um, Business inside this control pack and then basically we've got just a couple connections left um, first of all you want ignition um, so You know you can see this really fine piece of switching right here uh, basically this is just like a light switch from your house so uh, you can use anything you got as long as it's like a a toggle style of a switch so it comes off of here I realize it's it's black it should be red comes across here and goes to key positive and so um, that is basically 
um, waking the computer. That would be similar to taking your ignition and going to run. Um, so I can turn that on right now. You heard the uh, throttle body uh, made like a little hiccup, like a self-check type deal. And then that fuel pump is running too because the this, this, this portion of the control pack is what is um, controlling that fuel pump. So basically that needs to run, you know, all the time. As soon as you turn this off, it'll stop eventually. There you go, it stops. Um, and then also, uh, you know, you would have that on and then we need a momentary button in the same way that when you turn your key to start, you know, ch -ch 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 you need a momentary start right here. So this, this is just a push button. It's like a, a momentary, it only goes when I'm pushing like that. And that runs from the positive terminal down over and it hits the start wire. It's a blue with a white tracer. And so that commands the whole um, control pack to start. So when that happens um, and your ignition is on, so you had your, your other switches on and then you go and hit the, uh, the second one to start it, basically the computer makes this starter lead go positive. And so when it goes positive, it puts 12 volts onto this little wire and I just added this little stub piece. And that goes onto the solenoid portion of the starter. It's that little guy right there. And that makes the starter go. Um, other connections you need to make are, of course, these three need to be on our computer. Is a It's a, I believe, a pickup computer, so it's got three ports. Some of the later ones, I think, only have two. That's its own deal. Obviously, all the engine hardest needs to be plugged in. Injectors, coils, cam sensors, crank sensors, everything you got there all have to be plugged in, just like factory. Then you have these two um, main plugins, and you can kind of check your work and make sure you're on the right path of, because I think these actually can be interchanged, like this one could plug into here and this one into there. You could X those the wrong way. But if you notice, see the, see the big peach wire and the big peach wire? You need to kind of be, you know, looking at that and understanding that, you know, this pin is connected to this pin. And if there's, if the colors, they might not match up like perfectly, like you see here, they're not matching up, but at least the pins are matching up, you know, like there's no wire here, so there should be no wire right there. So that's something to watch. So connect both of those two as well. And then both O2 sensors, see here's an O2 sensor, comes across, plugged into here. O2 sensor comes across, plugged into here, okay. And I probably, it's very possible I have bank one switch for bank two, so that could be an issue as well. Um, and then also the other major connection is this uh, transmission connection. And you basically plug it in and then push this little ring down, like kind of tight, and that, that draws that in. Then um, you can see here is the OBD um, port, you know, so you can basically use that um, as an initial diagnostic, you can plug in like a scan tool or something and see like actual RPM signal when it's when it's cranking. That's kind of a, a helpful piece. And then also plug in your gas pedal, which of course is labeled pedal. Then all this, um, this here is the speedo stuff. None of that you need to, uh, you need to hook up. It says speedo signal, speedo power, and speedo ground. None of those we need for today. And also, um, you know, a great majority of these other like oil we don't need and light uh, clutch switch, upshift, downshift, um, shift common and tachometer. We don't need basically any of those for what we're doing. Um, then also um, fuel wise, uh, we just have, you know, the pump turns on. It's a return style fuel system. Basically it comes up here. We have this, um, this would be the feed. This here is the return going back to the tank. And then anything that is um, uh, basically above that regulated pressure goes out the return and then the rest hangs into this. Uh, this is the actual regulated line. And we have like a nice fitting there that converts from AN line to the actual um, fuel, uh, fuel rail. 
the um, intake tube is put on here. Uh, there is a, this is a sound tube port. Um, I have to get a cover for that, like a like a, a block off. I got an actual earplug <laughs> plugged into right here uh, to uh, basically keep from having a vacuum leak there. Um, we have various, you know, block offs. This is this, uh, this is I think for the EVAP that's blocked off, and then this is for the um, PCV would normally go there. But this is our heater hose so you have one heater um, port right there and the other heater port is right there and so we just we just looped it to make like a bypass basically um, this is the vacuum for right here is the vacuum for the power brakes but we don't have a vacuum assist power brake set up yet so that is just sitting there and um, Aside from that, I don't know, I'm, I maybe I'm missing something, but that's the great majority of what you need to plug in. It's really not all that bad. Um, again, you can kind of see like peach for peach, purple for purple, um, and ensure that those are plugged into the right um, ports. Another thing to remember um, is that, you know, just like any automatic transmission car, um, it has to be in park. And so park is all the way back, all the way down that way. Um, uh, if, you, if you had it all the way forward like this, that's not parked. You got to be all the way back and there's like kind of a uh, kind of a big hump before it goes into park. So all the way down is where you want to be um, to get this thing started. But of course when you do this and you do it right, you can turn the, the, end, or the ignition on and then go, if I just bump this, it goes to like an auto run. So watch my fingers in comparison to the actual start. And then when you turn off your ignition uh, switch right here, the pump dies, everything turns off, and that's basically how you work it. So um, we wanted to check and make sure that it had oil pressure, didn't have a massive rod knock, you know, things like that that you could potentially have with a salvage engine. Um, so we did that, and now I guess it's on to the next thing. We actually warmed it up so much that um, it took water. Um, this heater hose uh, got warm, both of the, um, uh, lines on the uh, on the uh, radiator actually were warm as well. So anyway, hope that gets your uh, coyote swap going. If you have a you know potentially a Gen One with the power by the hour uh, 6R80 kit, um, it's kind of a specific combo, um, but maybe it'll help you. Thanks for watching.